Bienvenidos. Welcome to the Learn Spanish con Salsa Podcast, the show for Spanish learners that love music, travel, and culture. Close your grammar textbooks, shut down the language apps, and open your ears to how Spanish is spoken in the real world. Let us show you how to go from beginner to bilingual. Here is your host, certified language coach, Tamara Marie. Hola y bienvenidos al episodio 36. Welcome to episode 36 of the Learn Spanish Con Salsa podcast. Now, before I get started, I want to remind you that enrollment to the Learn Spanish with Music course is now open. So if you're interested in moving forward with your Spanish and really making progress this fall, sign up at SpanishConSalsa.com forward slash join. You'll get all the details about the course and some additional resources to really help you improve your Spanish as we go forward through the next few months, okay? So um, again, SpanishConSalsa.com forward slash join. Now, this is part two of our conversation with Kayla. Now, if you didn't listen to part one of the conversation, go back and listen to episode 35, um, and you will hear part one of my conversation with Kayla. Um, but in this episode, we're going to continue our conversation, and we're going to talk about why solo travel can really help you improve your language learning, especially if you're stuck at a place where you're trying to learn Spanish, you're not really comfortable having conversations, and you often revert to English when you're speaking in Spanish. So uh, we talk a little bit about how traveling by yourself can really help you uh, get over that uh, hump or that plateau if that's where you are. Um, Kayla's also going to share how she chose a program to really help her make progress with her Spanish after she failed taking college courses and getting 50 textbooks from the library, literally 50 different books, um, and how that did not really help her um, get any better with her Spanish, but how she chose a program to really help her move forward, and why music was a game changer for her progress with Spanish. Um, and again, I know if you're listening to the Learn Spanish Con Salsa podcast, you may also uh, like music as well. Uh, but Kayla's going to share a little bit about how she used music as a tool in learning Spanish. Okay, instead of just kind of listening to the radio and going out dancing, which I'm sure a lot of us love to do, um, but kind of taking it a step further to really um, improving her Spanish. All right. So I hope you enjoy part two of the conversation with Kayla. So what helped you get from that spot where you were, you know, responding in English to like finally being able to say, oh, I can respond in Spanish. Was it something like you made a decision about it or was it something that gradually happened over time? It just definitely just happened over time. Um, especially with me responding in English. I just, that was the number one issue for me. It's, it's like, I'm speaking to someone who's speaking Spanish fluently. Why do I keep jumping back to English? I can never understand that. And as much as I would like put in my head, don't jump to English. Remember, try and think in Spanish, like just forget English. I would always go back to it. So I definitely think what has helped me, definitely think what has helped me is just the traveling and just being surrounded by just nothing but a Spanish community. Because before just being here and speaking with Spanish coworkers or friends that I have, I would always jump back to English. But I think it just took me to be by myself, um, travel by myself, because I've never done that before. Um, I didn't start doing that until November, I mean, especially to just an all Spanish speaking country. But for me to get out of that shell in order, you know, that took me to go do that, it's like, I just feel like I've just come far. Like, in it, it, that's just something I would always say I would never do. I would not, I would have to be on a plane with someone, a friend or a family member that spoke fluent Spanish in order for me to go travel to another country because I feel like my Spanish is not good. But I, you know, I just pushed myself. I was like, no, I'm gonna do it. This is something I really wanna do, you know, especially to help me with my Spanish. And I did it and I feel that that is the number one thing that has helped me. You know, and, and I also, you know, I say that too, that if you want to really get out there and push yourself is to do things on your own, right? Even if you're yeah. not able to travel, you know, to 
a country right away, like depending on, mm-hmm. you know, sort of whatever your situation is. I think even if you just go out by yourself to a place where people are more comfortable speaking Spanish, like for instance, if you go to a Mexican restaurant and then you're by yourself, you don't have that that stigma of like, oh, my friend, they know I'm learning Spanish. They're going to expect me to speak it perfectly or whatever. Like you could just go talk to the bartender. You could, mm-hmm. you know, order your food in Spanish. You can stumble through it, make mistakes. They're not going to care. They're going to appreciate that you made the effort. So I do think being on your own really does help because you don't have that crutch of, like you said, another person that speaks Spanish that will translate for you. Mm -hmm. Um, And also, I remember on one of our other episodes uh, where we talked about uh, Spanish in Cuba, traveling to Cuba and learning um, learning Spanish there. There's a husband yeah. and wife team. They have a travel company and they are still going to Cuba, by the way. So for people who are worried about the changes and the regulations, they are still traveling to Cuba. It's Conocer Cuba. But um, yeah, so the it's a husband and wife team and the wife, Devin, she speaks more Spanish and her husband isn't really, wasn't really as good as Spanish with, as she was because she majored in Spanish in school. But mm-hmm. when they would travel together, he said he would always rely on her because he knew that she could speak Spanish fluently. But it wasn't until he started going out on his own that he gained more confidence because he had to speak Spanish, right? Like he had to order food. He's like, I need to go to the store, I'm hungry. I need to work this out. So I think you're right, like putting yourself in those situations and being brave enough to do it and also to trust what you already know. Because it sounds like even when you were responding in English, you understood what people were saying, but you were still hesitant about your ability to to communicate in Spanish yourself. So I think that also helps you get over that hump um, once you make that decision. But you, you've got to just, you know, it can be a little scary, but I always tell people, you got to try it, right? Um, yeah. What's the worst that can happen, right? <laughs> right, right. <laughs> so true. so that, that's great. Um, and I also wanted to circle back to talk a little bit about music as well, because you mentioned mm-hmm. that you listen to Spanish music all the time. And I know... Obviously, a lot of people that listen to this podcast uh, because it's Learn Spanish Con Salsa also probably <laughs> love Latin music. So can you talk about the difference between what worked for you with learning with music that didn't work when you were trying to, you know, go through 50 textbooks? Like, what was it about the music that stuck with you? Because some people, they say they like music, but they don't want to learn Spanish that way for a number of reasons. So what is it about that combination of language and music that that really helps you connect more so than learning in college or with textbooks? Mm -hmm. Wow, music. I definitely like music, Latin music. I definitely, um, I love to go um, Latin dancing also. I love to go to clubs where they're playing bachata, salsa, merengue, um, reggaeton. For me to know that I could learn Spanish through music, because I love music so much and have a passion for music, it it just helped me. I know a lot of the times before I came across Spanish con salsa, I'm in the car, whether I'm listening to music, I'm saying the words of the songs, but I never knew what I was saying, the meaning. So I know the, the lyrics to the Spanish song, but I never thought, oh, let me try it and look up the lyrics and see what it is they're talking about. It would just always be out ex soprano, you know, you know, what is uh, Romeo talking about on this song or something like that. But um, it, the lyrics and um, just knowing what the words mean, it's just, and just knowing that's something I could use in everyday conversation too, to help with my Spanish. Um, I think I, I, for me, like I said, because I love music, it, it's something that I could, I feel like it just could help me every day since I, I, I listen to the songs every day. It's it's definitely my, my learning tool. I'm always, even if I come across a new song, I always want to, a song that I'm always listening to but don't know what it's about, I'm always quick to go look up the lyrics so I can understand what the song is about and then just learn vocabulary from that song. And I think that is the great thing about Spanish con salsa is because you have the music there and how it could go you know, the slow pace and then the regular pace. And then you have like the definitions and everything there, the words. And it's like, oh, I've heard that word before, or I've, you know, spoke to this person before who I've used that word, but I didn't realize that is what it meant. So yes, definitely um, for me, using um, music with learning Spanish has definitely helped me. And I absolutely love it. What helps me is the pronunciation. 
Um, because with some Spanish words, I've always had a difficult time, or I think I'm pronouncing a Spanish word the right way and I'm not. So to listen to the lyrics and then to go over them again with a slow pace to hear whether the female or the man, you know, the word that they're saying, it definitely helps. The vocabulary is, is really um, helpful for me. And then the definition. And yeah, it's something that I, I do take with me and I'll sit there and learn over a week's time and then definitely use it. And I think that's the key you said using it and I, you know, and also taking your time with it. Cause I know some mm -hmm. people, you know, like when, if you get an app, um, you know, like maybe Duolingo or something like that, you know, they've got the little trophies and you're like, Oh, I want to like finish this lesson. I'm going to get this trophy, oh, yeah. you know, motivates you in one way, but at the same time, it's like, if you don't make an intention to use what you learned and take your time with it, then it's like, well, now you just have a trophy, right? Right, exactly. <laughs> So I think what you said is really key about making sure that you use it so that you really don't, it's, it's really true, right? Use it or lose it, mm -hmm. right? That, that, that applies to language learning as well. So one more question about Spanish con salsa, and then I'm going to switch to our quick fire round and ask you some questions in Espanol. Okay. Um, but I was going to ask, did you have any concerns? Like you said, you, you came across several different programs when you were really serious about and committed to learning Spanish. Um, was, was there any concern that you had about joining that may have prevented you from signing up and what made you move forward anyway, even if um, you had those concerns about signing up for the membership? No, I never, I mean, I, I think I can remember sending you an email and asking you a question um, just to make sure um, it was something that I wanted to do, like to join, to learn Spanish. But I didn't have any second thoughts, especially when, I, when it said, you know, learning Spanish through music. Because again, like I said, I love music and I'm just like, wow. And that's not the only time I heard that actually um, um, Spanish speakers that I know that know English fluently, they, it's just funny that they told me that they were learning Spanish, what helped them with their English, I'm sorry, not Spanish, their English was watching TV in English and also listening to English music. Like, it, it was just so funny that I've heard that before. It's good to learn another language through music. And even when I've traveled to um, Dominican Republic, I know um, a neighbor of my friend, he knows English fluently. And he said he learned it on his own. And, you know, I'm just like always, how, how? You know, just to see if I could get, you know, some um, other like boosters to help me with my, you know, Spanish. But he was just like music music and he was like I know this song this song in English this song in English and I'm just like wow and then that's when I was like yes so when I came across Spanish con salsa and it was talking about learning um Spanish through music I knew I knew like that was something that would definitely help me because just hearing other Spanish speakers who have learned English they said music is the number one thing that helped them with their English so and and it's true as soon as I signed up for the membership like it, that's what it was. That's what helped me. Definitely the music. The music definitely helped me. And everything else on the website. It was just such a big help. And um, if it, like I said, if it wasn't for Spanish con salsa, I would still be <laughs> probably saying those couple of, you know, words, hola, como estas, you know, just and not getting further than that. So it took for me to um, definitely um, come across Spanish con salsa and to pay for my membership in order to have come this far with my Spanish. And I'm just, I'm very proud of myself, but also keeping consistent also, because that was another problem for me. I don't feel like I was consistent enough. I'm like, okay, I'm gonna learn it for like a couple of days, look at the website for like two days and then just put it down. But no, you have to really have the heart to do it. You have to really want it in order for you to definitely, you know, speak Spanish. You have to definitely keep consistent and keep that on your schedule. So thank you for sharing your experience about how you learned Spanish. And I know that you've been an inspiration for folks within the Spanish consultancy community as well, um, because you will be going to Puerto Rico coming up very soon so hope to hear about your trip there and to hear how many conversations you've been able to have and continue to improve your spanish so Definitely. with that we're going to switch gears and we're going to do our quick fire round so i'm going to ask you five questions in espanol so lita 
Ajá, sí, listo. Ok. <ríe> Pregunta número uno es, ¿cuál es tu palabra favorita de español? Ah, uh, mi favorita palabra de español es, no hay de qué. No hay de qué. <ríe> Porque yo siempre um, dice, uh, no hay de qué. <ríe> y número dos. En este momento, porque yo sé que hay muchas canciones, pero en este momento, ¿cuál es tu <risa> canción favorita? Hmm. No, pregunta. Uh, mi canción favorita, hmm. Nadie de Faruco. Y número tres, ¿cuál fue la última cosa? que leíste, escuchaste o miraste en español? Una visión para uh, la música. Saca tu teléfono, okay, uh -huh. tu celular, y traduce el último texto que recibiste al español. Uh, que, te que tengas un buen día um, de mi amiga en República Dominicana. <laughs> <laughs> Y la última pregunta es, ¿qué es algo que te gustaría hacer, pero tienes miedo a hacerlo? Hmm. Me gustaría vivir en un país español. Ah, ok. ¿Cuál país? Sí. Ah, hmm. Probablemente República Dominicana, porque no Puerto Rico, porque es, no sé, like, americano, like, um, Sí, es parte de oh, Estados oh, Unidos. Sí, sí, pero vi la acá dominicana porque para mí es muy um, tranquilo, me gusta la gente, me gusta la comida, um, me gusta um, el país, es just muy bonita, so, me gusta mucho República Dominicana. Ah, sí, es un, un país que también me encanta, pero no sé Ajá. si quiero vivir allá, no sé. No. <ríe> pero sí, a visitar sí, pero no sé. Me encanta mucho ahí. ¿Y tienes amigos allí o familia? No solo mis amigos allí, pero mi, mi esposo quiere vivir allí también. Es, es algo diferente. Sí. Y el clima es mejor también. Sí, porque me, me encanta el sol y, y me gusta el Caribe mucho. Ok, entonces queda gracias por participar. Thank you for participating okay, nice, in the quick fire round. So, do you have anything you'd like to share with anyone as we close out? Just if they're thinking about learning Spanish, but they haven't really committed yet, or they feel like they're stuck and they're not making a lot of progress. What would you say to someone who's listening right now and wants to be able to uh, maybe six months or a year from now be at the place where you are, um, where they're confident in speaking Spanish and able to travel without feeling like they need to have a translator with them? How would you, um, what would you say to them to get them to move forward and get over that hump? I would just say it, it will get better. The number one thing is just don't give up because there has been many of times, as much as I've wanted to learn Spanish over the years, I have wanted to give up or I just thought this is just too much. I'm never going to learn it fluently. I'm never going to feel comfortable speaking Spanish with another person, um, traveling or anything. Just please just um, take your time, be consistent know that you will come further than you are already but just push yourself like you got to really push yourself you got to really want this if you really really want to speak spanish fluently you just have to um really push yourself get on a schedule also a schedule is um very important i have the weekly planner from Spanish con salsa that I use and that's the number one thing that keeps me going is I'm always going back to looking at my planner and seeing what I have written down for the week that I need to do definitely for the people that just feel like that they're not gonna be able to press on or they're not gonna get anywhere stick with Spanish con salsa um, if you're not unsure just try it out just try it out but that has definitely helped me in the years that I've wanted to learn Spanish. And I'm in my 30s now. I've been wanting to learn Spanish since my 
early 20s and it took me to get here to get to the Spanish Consalsa website for me to now be able to start speaking Spanish fluently. So if I can do it, definitely anybody else can do it. That's great. Thank you for sharing those words of wisdom. And I hope something you said today or something that anyone's heard today is really will help them make that next step, right? Even like you said, even yeah. if you're not sure, just try something. You never know if that next thing you try might be the thing that works for you. So with that, we'll close out this episode. Thank you, Kayla, so much for joining me on the Learn Spanish Con Salsa podcast. Muchas gracias for having me. Thank you for listening to the Learn Spanish Con Salsa podcast at LearnSpanishConSalsa.com. <laughs>